That's Joseph. That's Tyler. And you're watching Super Squad D, where the D stands for Divine. Legion is in no short order the greatest comic book pilot of all time. Wow, bold claim. I'm doing it. Keep watching, we'll tell you why. Woohoo! Yippee! As a miniseries, Legion starts off right away by striking a tone that resonates with viewers. You immediately know what to feel when you see this episode. And that feeling is confusion. But it's in a good way. The entire episode, you really feel like you're stepping into the mind of the main character, David, and you're kind of unsure whether you're crazy or if it's just him. I mean, by the end of the episode, I still was unsure of what was real and what wasn't. Like, there's a chance none of the episode was real. Which was brilliantly done, and it really points to how great a director Noah Howley seems to be. He had great success with Fargo, and you can tell in this series, he is a veteran and he knows exactly what he's doing. So the series begins with walking us through David's early life as we see his powers kind of develop and he doesn't have control over them. The question that raises up at this point is, are the powers actually real or are they just delusions that he has as a paranoid schizophrenic? So he's in the hospital and it's his birthday. His sister shows up and brings him a cupcake. Now it's at this point that I gotta mention, you're really confused. When does this take place? We all want to know, A, is this connected to the movie universe? And if so, what timeline? And B, what time period does this take place? Because his sister shows up, and it looks like she's wearing some type of 70s getup. Later in the episode, we see someone using a tablet that could only be from present day. But all that confusion really plays into the stylistic approach that they're aiming for with this show. I mean, there's moments in which you kind of feel like you're going crazy yourself. There's scenes and hallucinations in which you're not sure if they're real, if he's just making it up. There's an entire awesome dance scene that we'll talk more about. It's pretty incredible how much detail they put into making it a crazy show and kind of making you feel crazy in the process. So his sister brings him a birthday cake. Unfortunately, apparently, according to the rules of some psychiatric hospitals, you can't just give crazy people things. So she can't give him the cupcake and she eats it awkwardly. And he delivers the awesomest line that sets up the whole episode. He goes, something new needs to happen soon. And boy does it. Shortly thereafter, we're introduced to a new character called Sid Barrett. Sid's a new patient at the hospital that David's been at for six years now. And up until then, he really only had a relationship with a girl named Lenny, played by Aubrey Plaza. So right away, we can tell that David takes a liking to Sid. But you notice right away that she has one quirk and she is super serious about it. She does not want to be touched. Later in the episode, we see why she doesn't like being touched. She's about to be discharged. David goes in for a kiss and we discover that she has this ability to switch minds and bodies with whoever it is she comes in contact with. Crazy power. Because of this, an incident happens where Sid, in David's body, unused to his powers, which apparently are real, traps all the patients at the hospital in their rooms by removing the doors and making the walls solid. In the process, Lenny, David's friend, is killed by being trapped in the wall. Which raises the question, if you've seen X-Men Age of Apocalypse, what is Fox's <laughs> obsession with putting people in walls and floors in order to kill them? I don't Weird think obsession. That is very strange. Weird. The whole incident ends with David eventually getting his own body back, but now he's outside of the hospital because he took Sid's place when being discharged. So he's free. And that's when the show shows us what's actually going on. So we pick up with David at a government facility and he's being interrogated, unbeknownst to him, he thinks he's just being asked about the incident that happened, when in reality, they're trying to figure out A, what his power level is, and B, where is Sid Barrett? How did, how did she get out, where did she go? As the interrogation progresses, David continues to get more and more pissed off. So they strap him to a chair and put him halfway underwater. And it's at that point that Sid contacts him telepathically, and basically says, hey, we're coming to save you. And one of the awesomest fight scenes you'll ever see of mutants takes place. I mean, it was a pretty good fight scene. It was pretty legit. It was good. It looked a little cheesy at times. So Sid and the other mutants break David out. There's that awesome fight scene. There's a guy throwing boulders around with his mind. <laughs> that sort of stuff is happening. And then they connect to someone known as Melanie. And at the end of the episode, David takes Melanie's hand 
who knows what happens next. Or maybe he didn't take her hand because it was all in his mind. Again, We're, no telling. No, there's no telling what's going on. The style of the show is so unique because they do such a good job of telling a real story in a schizophrenic way that mirrors David's own mind. So you're getting bits and pieces here and there and you're never completely sure what's real and what's not real. Even up to the very end, when David looks behind him before he takes Melanie's hand and sees the guy with the yellow eyes, and you wonder, okay, wait, is he seeing the guy with the yellow eyes? Is the guy with the yellow eyes there? Is any of this real? I have no idea. If you happen to watch FX's newer, recently, critically acclaimed show Atlanta, you understand that FX is making an attempt at making good and truly unique television. The pacing of Atlanta is unlike any other show I've ever seen, and the style, the crazy schizophrenic style of Legion matches that in a different format. It's really cool because we know Legion fits into the X-Men movies somehow, some way, but it is its own unique product that doesn't match anything we've ever seen so far in any of those movies. FX gives creators the ability to do whatever they want, and in this case, it pays dividends. A lot of that also piggybacks off of a phenomenal performance by Dan Stevens. If you know anything about Dan Stevens, you know that he's from Downton Abbey. And of course, his character in Downton Abbey is a, uh, a, a British uh, royalty of sorts and very proper, that sort of thing. So it's really cool to see him in this role in which he looks gaunt, he looks worn, he looks weathered, he looks crazy, for lack of a better term. And it's a completely different character, and he nails it. He does a phenomenal job. Another aspect of the show I really liked is Aubrey Plaza. She did a pretty good job as Lenny, his friend in the mental institution, and I was upset when she died because I was like, well, that seems like a waste of Aubrey Plaza's character. I really love the fact that they brought her back as a ghost or a hallucination in his mind that he sees periodically. I hope that trend continues and that she just randomly pops up in places because it's really fun to see Aubrey Plaza pop up in random places that only he can see. It's, it's really a fantastic storytelling device. And there's a really cool little touch in there that the character Sid Barrett is named after Roger Sid Barrett, member of Pink Floyd, whose music is highly influential on the tone of the show. Really nice touch by the creators there. We can both agree that the absolute best part of the show was the Bollywood dancing. Not only did they nail it from a Bollywood standpoint, but the tone that is carried in that scene just feels so perfect for the show. The scene pops up as a dream that David has, and it's wild and crazy. The characters are behaving in ways that they never should, but there's little details that really make the scene phenomenal. Yeah, if you notice in the episode, there's a guy who's constantly hiding behind plants, and in the background of the Bollywood dance scene, he's just behind a plant going, doing a nice little dance. And it's that attention to detail that really makes this show stand out from all the others uh, that compete against it. Tell us what you think. Comment below about whether you're gonna keep watching, whether you liked it, what you expect to see, because for us, we're pretty much hooked. Oh yeah. Let me tell you that much right now. And don't forget, by hitting that subscribe button and dropping a comment, you'll be automatically entered into our giveaway of the Starman Omnibus. We're gonna announce that winner on Friday. You do not want to miss that one. That's Joseph. That's Tyler. And this is Super Squad D, where the D stands for Divine! Woohoo! Yippee!